I am so excited that you're here because I have some Dollar Tree fall DIYs that you don't want to miss. So let's just jump in. Let's not waste any time. For the first DIY, we're gonna take one of these love signs from Dollar Tree, and I start by taking off the hanger, flipping it to its backside, and then marking all the way down the side um, every one third. Next, I take my utility knife and a ruler, and I start by scoring the lines that I just made. I do that on both sides, and then once I have it scored a few times, then I'm able to take it back to my cutting mat, and then I can score it even more. Once I was done scoring it, then I take my stylus tool or embossing tool, whatever you would like to call it, and I just kind of scrape in between where I cut, and this is going to give you the illusion that this is a few pieces of wood put together. So once I was done scraping it out and vacuuming up all the dust, then I took my mini zip sander, which is always linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below, and I just kind of put it on its side and sand down those spaces. Next, I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a distress coat, not worrying about getting paint where I just cut and scraped the spaces out of. And then I take a pack of stir sticks from Home Depot and I'm going to mark out a frame and cut that down. Once I had all my pieces cut, then I take my mini zip sander once again, sand down those rough edges, and then stain it with my Dixie Belle Tobacco Reed Voodoo Gel Stain. This is one of my favorites. You guys know I talk about it all the time, and Dixie Belle is always linked in the description box below. I am in no way, shape, or form affiliated with them. I just truly love their products. So I go ahead and I stain all of my pieces. Once the pieces were stained, then I take my chip brush, which these are also linked in my Amazon shop. Now these are not my favorite, but I did find some that I do think are okay. So I linked those for you guys and I dry brush some of my white Waverly chalk paint on all the pieces. I also take the same chip brushes and dry brush some gel stain all around the sign. I did go ahead and dry brush where the uh, cut pieces would meet the edge of the sign, if that makes sense. I knew that if I dry brushed the edges and then put the stir sticks on there, you wouldn't be able to see it. And I did go a little heavy handed. So to fix that, all I did was just cover up some of that color with some white Waverly chalk paint. And then I glued down all of my trim pieces with some hot glue. For the X pieces in the middle, I recently just bought these bamboo sticks from Amazon. I absolutely love them. I have them linked for you guys. They're super easy to work with. They're nice and thin, so you can cut them with scissors or they cut really nicely with the miter shears. And I had such a good time doing this X piece, probably the easiest I've ever done, just because these pieces were so easy to work with. So all I did was just lay out the pieces. Now you do need two for each X. Generally you want one long piece and then you'll cut the X piece. But because these are not too long, you do need to have to you do need to butt them together, which is no big deal. I just laid them up to the corners. Um, I traced out the mark, like the shape of the corner. I cut that down. And then I also did the exact same thing for all four sides. Once I had them all cut down and fit together nicely, then I stained them with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain once again. I also left in the mistake in the um, first little clip of me doing this X piece. I wanted to show you guys, I make mistakes too. My first cut was way too short, so I had to make that longer. And you guys, it's okay to make mistakes. Make, make your mistake and learn from it. That's how we learn, that's how we grow. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. 
Once I had all of my pieces cut and stained, then I just glued that down in the middle with some hot glue. I then took this thankful sign from Dollar Tree and these have plastic over them. Somebody in the comments let me know that it is, it has something to do with the oxidize, oxidization. Is that how you say it? <laughs> it has something to do with that. But anyway, I just removed that very carefully and then I use a dabber brush to dab on some white Waverly chalk paint. I then went in with my Moss Waverly chalk paint using the same dabber brush um, and then making sure that that is dry, I go in with a chip brush and my antique wax and I dry brush on that wording. And then I also dry brush the X with some white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was finished, then we could go in and glue this down with some hot glue. Now you don't wanna go gluing the back of this just yet. Lay it down on your sign and then you can carefully lift that up to place some glue underneath. I then take a small yo-yo from Dollar Tree, two of the bamboo sticks and one square dowel rod and I paint all of the pieces with my black or my ink Waverly chalk paint. Once all the pieces are dry, then I'm going to lay this down on the top of my sign and mark where I need the screws to go with a pencil. Once I have my first mark down, then I take the smallest drill bit that I have, I lay the bamboo stick on top of a scrap square dowel and I begin by drilling out those holes at the top. Now you want to do this so that when you go to screw it down it's not going to split which I still had some split that's okay I just made a new one no big deal and when you're screwing into the yo-yo you really want to go slow if you go too fast you will also split your wood. So once I had the first one put together I forgot to mention that I did put that together with a little wood screw and I also cut that down to size so I could kind of see what I was working with and then like I said I marked out the other screw holes drilled those out as well and here I'm just showing you how I figured out to stop the splitting so if you just make your holes a little bit bigger by um, going in a circle motion with your drill you can make those just a little bit bigger and then you won't have any splitting for the other side of the yo-yo, so one side is small, the other side is um, a little bit bigger of an opening. So what I did was I added some hot glue into that hole. That way when I went to go screw in the yo-yo to the top piece, um, it had something to screw to. I also drilled out the holes in the bottom of the sign so the um, the stir sticks as well as the square dowel and then I screwed in those screws and once I was done I painted it with black so it all blended together. I highlighted those screws with some gold rub and buff and literally you guys that was it. Look how amazing this sign turned out. I used really cheap items and I cannot believe how realistic those fake barn door track look. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one. Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to All Things Crafty where I love to do all things crafty on a budget. My name's Melissa, I am pregnant mama of three and I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by next month when my baby boy is born, which sounds like a crazy goal, but I am not a quitter and I know that with your help, we can get there together. So if you enjoyed this video or this type of content, I would love if you would stick around, become part of my crafty family, Click that red subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, share this out, do all the youtube -y things for me, and let's jump into today's video. Okay friends, I know that was a little different, but I'm trying something new, so just stick with me. For DIY number two, we're going to take this tag sign that once again I got from Dollar Tree back at Valentine's Day, and I take the hanger off as well as the tag. 
I once again flip it over and mark every one third and then I also do the exact same technique that we did with the last sign um, you know marking it and then scoring it and removing some of that uh, material to make this look like wood. Once again, I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint, not worrying about covering the little divots that we just cut. I then made this free printable that I will have linked in the description box below for you guys that says Hello Fall, as well as these little pumpkins. You do have to print these in two separate pages, but I do just cut them down and transfer that on with my graphite paper. And then I also drew a little border around the middle sign and then went over the wording and the border with my black paint pen. Next, I wanted to give my pumpkins a little bit of color, so I just pulled out my pumpkin, my moss, and my cashew Waverly chalk paint, as well as my antique wax, and I just painted them different colors. There was no right or wrong way to do this. Anybody can do it. Um, I am no artist or painter, I should say. Um, I just do it until my eyes are happy, and I encourage you guys to do the same. If you are nervous to do it directly on a sign, practice on a scrap piece of paper first, and then you can do the painting on your sign. So once the painting was done, then I went in with this gold acrylic paint. I think it's kind of like gold leaf, if you will. And I just kind of give those pumpkins some highlight as well as the wording. And at the top for the whole I did um, draw a circle around the hole and then paint that with my gold acrylic paint as well. I then took a piece of nautical rope from Dollar Tree, put a piece of painter's tape on the end. I also drilled out that hole to make it a little bit bigger and then I tied two knots in the nautical rope. Next, I take a uh, simple bow, and if you guys need to know how to make bows, I will leave that uh, video linked in the cards in the right-hand corner, and I just layered it with a few different colored bows, and then to finish this sign off, I should have done this before adding my bows. You guys know sometimes I like to work backwards. <laughs> No big deal. Um, it can always be fixed. So I just go ahead with my antique wax and my mini chip brush, dry brush all the way around the sign as well as where the faux wood meets and look how amazing this turned out, you guys. I absolutely love all the colors mixed together. I love the dry brushing. Let me know down in the comments what part of this project is your favorite. Moving on to the next DIY, all I did was take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree. I sketched out the shape of a pumpkin and then I cut it out with my hot knife. Now I did cut the stem separately and I also uh, sectioned this into four pieces and cut those pieces out as well. And then I used my fingernails and just another few random tools that I had laying around to essentially rough up this foam board. Now we're gonna make this look like wood. Yes, this is your guys' favorite wood uh, foam board technique. This is not my original idea. Go check out Peppermint Cactus on YouTube. She is the original, well, I don't know if there's anything original these days, but I saw this from her first, so go check her out where she does a really in-depth tutorial and she hers look way better than mine so anyway go check her out um she'll teach you how to do this really well so i'll do my best to teach you what i have learned along the way so once you have roughed up your boards then you're going to take antique wax um clear wax by waverly and then like today i'm working with a color so i have my moss waverly chalk paint 
as well as some black chalk paint as well. So you're just going to start off with these back bath sponges. You're going to cut them down to four and using one of the wedges, you're going to take it on the end, take some antique wax on like the corner of your cut sponge and just make some dark streaks as well as highlighting the edge. You want to set that aside to dry and then um, once that dries, then you're going to take that same sponge, your antique wax, and you're going to dip it in the clear wax, um, kind of toning down that pigment in it. Then you're going to kind of um, just brush that onto the foam board, and then you'll see that it's starting to look like wood. Once that layer dries, then I go in with my black and my anti or my clear wax and I just kind of push that black into the knots and the um, you know holes that I made pretty much so that you can really see those and then I also take my sponge and just blend that in now you're going to continue to do this with all the different colors um, and you'll see that once you experiment with this you're going to get your rhythm down on how you like it to look. Your first one is not going to be perfect. Your second one probably won't either. Uh, this is this is definitely a technique that takes some practice and it's foam board. So you can cut it up and try over and over again. So once I was satisfied with my faux wood pumpkin let me know if you guys think that looks like real wood down in the comments i then take two scrap stir sticks and this shelf from dollar tree i take the shelf out of the package i cut the hanger off of it and then stain all of the pieces with my dixie bell voodoo stain and i also cover the holes on the shelf with some um, lightweight spackling from dollar tree I then flip my foam pumpkin over. I make sure there's a few spaces in between the pieces because once again, I want this to look like faux wood. And then I glue that together with my stir sticks. I also put some Jenga blocks at the bottom so that we had something um, easier to glue the bottom to. And then I take a large um, paintbrush. It's actually an old chip brush. And I just dry brush my entire pumpkin with some white Waverly chalk paint. I also glued my stem down to the back with a large um, popsicle stick. And the next part is my favorite. I wasn't sure what I wanted to put on this. I almost just left this pumpkin plain, to be quite honest, and just put a little bit of, you know, greenery on it and a bow and called it a day. However, I dug in my stash and I found this transfer from last year or the year before, don't quote me, I do believe it was last year um, around this time, but I found this transfer and I absolutely loved it when I used it, I loved it when I found it, so I start by transferring on the fresh local at the top with the little wheelbarrow and the pumpkins, and then I continue to transfer on the rest of this to my little pumpkin. Now I always tell you guys if you like transfers that you see, right now I'm using a lot of old ones just because I have them in my stash and that's what I want to use at the time. However, um, if there are any from the uh, you know, current year, I always encourage you guys to grab them when you see them because you can use them for years and years to come. They're reusable. They're really, really sturdy. Like a lot of times I forget to wash them out. And then, um, I mean, it takes a little bit more elbow grease, but they do wash out and I can use them over and over again. So I have an offer right now for you to save 40% off just like I do. That is the exact discount that I get. I will leave my text number in the pinned comment in the description box below and if I remember I'll also pop that up on the screen for you um, but once I was done transferring on my words then I take some raffia and just make a simple raffia bow I just tied a simple shoestring bow for this, nothing fancy, and then I glue that down to the top of my pumpkin with some hot glue. 
I then took this leaf off of another sign from Dollar Tree. I painted it, or I actually dry brushed some of my rub and buff on the leaf to make it stand out and then glued that to the side of my bow. And then I hot glued this down to the shelf piece for the bottom. I felt that this was missing a little something, so I took some of this moss, I kind of spread it out first to make sure that it would fit nicely, and then I glue that down. I also take some of these little mini pumpkins from Dollar Tree and glue those down as well. Last but not least, I took some of this lamb's ear off of a pick that I had in my stash. I cut the ends off, glue that down to either side of my bow, and look how absolutely gorgeous this sign turned out. I love all the fall colors that look amazing together. It gives you all those warm and cozy feels. I just want to curl up on the couch with a blanket and I love this sign. So let me know down in the comments which project from today's video was your favorite. As always, you guys, don't forget, please remember, you guys are absolutely stunning. You're worthy. You're amazing. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. You just have to put a little effort into it and have that drive to do it. But I'm telling you guys, anything you set your mind to, you can do it. And if you loved any of these projects, don't get intimidated to at least try it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this once again. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up, share this out on your way out. Don't forget to text me the word ketone or chalk to the number 302-204-0881 if you guys want any info. And with that being said, I love y'all with all my heart and soul and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.